you make Ain't no lot to see Lord, those plans I made for myself I got nobody else to Welcome to everyone joining us to experience stories of resilience, hope, perseverance, and joy. Move over to a sport chair, a basketball wheelchair. Category of best video are... We love you guys. Everybody, we are back. You're watching The Hunt, and we are going to continue our conversation with, I'll call him Coach Jim Azure. He is the author of the new book, The 16th Street Chronicles, Where Violence Met Character. And it really tells a, a, a seismic tale, really, of, of times in the 1960s where Jim went to and ended up teaching at um, a, a parochial school in, um, in Kansas City. So Jim, you with us? Yes. All right, fantastic. So we were, we were talking before the break just about um, your experience as a student there and just, um, just how dangerous you know, it was, but yet you bonded uh, with your classmates, uh, and you all protected each other, and uh, I guess uh, just bonded through that experience of just going through um, that time um, in America um, that really doesn't exist today so much, but um, did shape a, a whole generation. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when I attended the funeral of former uh, Oakland A's pitcher, Chuck Dobson, one of the athletes kind of from uh, his class that said never once during the time that he was a dealer said that he ever experienced even a feeling of prejudice. And that kind of summed up the school. That's uh, even though there was many different groups there, and they oftentimes would joke to each other about, uh, you know, their ethnic group. But we all knew how much we cared about each other. And then what do you, where do you think that what originated from? Was that just the values that were instilled in the school? I know it was a military school, but was it really focused on character and leadership development under a core set of values? Well, it was a, it was a military academy. We were highly disciplined, and we knew that the, the discipline, you know, depending upon what we might have done, mm -hmm. uh, you were just always warned. You do that again, you're going to be punished. And so... Um, and then after a couple of examples, if you weren't very smart, you uh, you sooner would have figured it out. And so that was what the school was. And even on the athletic field, and even in the classroom, they would say, you know, we just live across the street. And if you ever have a problem, any kind of a problem, um, you know, you can always call us. You know, I'll always be there seven days a week. You can come to us. Um, if you want to study and want extra help in the classroom, whatever it is you may need, you can count on us. And so we knew that from the teachers. Now the coaches didn't live there, obviously, but they had, uh, you know, they had the same attitude. And there were times even when I ran track, when I asked the coach, I said, "Hey, I really would like to have a really good practice on Sunday. You know, could I meet you down at, at school and, and we'll just have an extra practice?" And he would do that. It would just be two of us, and he would take me through a hard workout. So I, I just knew that, you know, uh, you know, whatever my dreams were, that they were always there not just to encourage me and teach me the right work ethics, but I could always count on them. And that was the kind of teacher I wanted to be. That's and, what really and did you know me. that? At what age did you know that? Because really what you experienced was really great leadership and, you know, the, having the accessibility and the availability um, of those teachers and coaches. I, I don't think I knew it directly. I, 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 my first role model was uh, Father Mahoney at St. Francis. He was a football coach, and I, I so admired him. He was my first role model. And when I got the deal with Sal, and I saw so many people that were, were like him, both coaches and non-coaches. Uh, but this was the place I really liked being at. It was it was my it was a better than being at home almost, um, and. And you asked me when did I know that? I remember my 
my freshman year, we had a teacher, a history teacher said, you need to learn how to think. And so once a week, we're going to have discussions and there's no right or wrong answer. And, and so he, we went through that process and the end of class one day, he said, you really need to know by the, by the end of your sophomore year, what you want to do for the rest of your life. And I really started worrying about that. I thought about <laughs> it all night and I woke up the next morning. I thought, I can't imagine doing anything for the rest of my life that wasn't involved in sports. I want to be a coach. And, and that was it. I mean, it was, I knew right then I was going to be a coach and that everything I, I needed to do was in the classroom because if I didn't go to college and graduate, I, I wasn't going to be a coach. So I was pretty focused on it. It's so funny to hear that, you know, because, you know, I kind of grew up in the same way. Like, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, people start asking you that at 12, 14, 16. It's like, oh, my gosh, how are you supposed to know? Uh, so I find it fascinating that, you know, you kind of leaned into that and actually became that and and was have been so successful, you know, at that. So it obviously was the right choice for you. Let's just um, stop for a second and, and remind the audience, where can they find your book? Jim, is it on Amazon and all the major retailers? It, it's on Amazon, uh, and it's also at Barnes and, Barnes and Noble. They can go to my uh, website, which is jimmajor.com. Uh, if somebody really wanted a signed copy, you know, they could order one directly from me. But there's uh, four different places they could find it, and uh, it's very easy to find on the Internet. Oh, fantastic. You know, I talk to a lot of people, and so many people say, you know, I have this story to tell. You know, wouldn't it wouldn't it be amazing in a book or a movie? And so, and I do believe that you know everybody has a story. Um, so, for you, what made you write this book? Yeah, I knew it was a great story, and I'll tell you, you know, whenever De La Salle students, former students, get together, uh, that was always that way from the day we graduated. But but even today. The school closed in 1971, mm -hmm. and so we have a lot of older alumni. They love to get together and talk about their school and all their experiences in the school and the classroom. And I, I know I know a lot of people that have schools there for their uh, the, the schools they graduated from, but but what makes our alumni a little bit different is they love to talk about yeah when this happened to brother so and so and this coach and and, and it's just stories are just it's like and so when I sat down to write it, I thought that. Story. This is a story that's got to be told because it's like it's so fascinating and sometimes they're really hard to believe, but they're all very much true. Yeah, no, absolutely. And what's next for you? Is there another book on the way? I am. I, I, I really want um, started writing a book that's going to be entitled Heaven Starts on Earth, and it's really about teaching and education in the United States. Uh, it follows the same line of, you know, I think I was a different kind of a teacher in a public school than the other teachers were because of my my upbringing at De La Salle High School. That's the kind of teacher I wanted to be. And at the same time, all the things that I saw in education through the, the 15, seven years I've been inside of a school building, uh, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of good things and I've seen an awful lot of bad things. I feel like I think that we need to change direction in a lot of ways in our school. So that's the, the gist of the book. Awesome. Out. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. There's just so much to talk about in terms of education. We need to have you back because we are already out of time. Thank you so much, Coach, for being with us today. I hope you come back and join us. You've been listening to The Hunt, and we're with Jim Azure, the author of The 16th Street Chronicles. Check it out on Amazon.